Hey everyone, Becky here, 52 Baker. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to have you guys here this week because we are not doing sugar flowers. We are going to do cake and we're gonna paint on cake and I love painting on cakes. So first off, the cake that I'm painting on is covered in fondant. That's how I like to paint. Second, I didn't do this freehand, so don't be scared. I'm not gonna show you guys how to do it freehand. I used the stencil. This here is who we will be painting this week, Princess Belle, she's so pretty. I'm not tooting my own horn here. I just think she's pretty as a princess. For anyone who still thinks, well, this is a little too much, well, at least stick around for a few tips. So I have three tips just for painting in general. First, make sure that your fondant is dry. You don't wanna paint on anything sticky. Second, treat it like a watercolor painting. You don't wanna go over the same spot too many times because you're gonna eat through the fondant and it's gonna become wet and sticky. Again, really gross. Third. Don't be afraid to add layers on your paint and use different shades of color. It'll look prettier. It'll look more realistic and it'll make it more interesting. So just make sure that you paint a color, let it dry, paint another, let it dry, another as many times as you want. Just always make sure that you're painting on something dry. And that's it. For everything else, I have a bunch of other tips to share with you for the cake itself, but it'll make more sense if you see them. So let's get into it. We're going to start off by making a liquid pencil, so grab your food grade alcohol and pour it into your saucer plate and then using your fine tip brush, grab just a speck of black paint with the tip of it and blend it into the alcohol to create a little gray. Cut out your outline that you plan on painting, place it on the cake, and using your liquid pencil, go ahead and outline it. You're free to use a regular pencil because they're non-toxic, but I don't wanna risk poking a hole in my fondant and I don't want any harsh lines, so I prefer to use this liquid pencil. I go ahead and cut out her head and I outline it, her hairline, and then her eyes. That is what I needed most help with and I wanted to make sure I got it right so it looked like Belle. But I think the most important part on a person's face are their eyes, their nose, and their mouth. So you cut out as much as you need or as little. The rest I'll go ahead and outline with my liquid pencil before I get ready to color. Once I'm ready to color, I grab my colors and I place them on my painter's palette using just a drop of each, you don't need very much. And then next to each drop, I go ahead and put the, fo the food grade alcohol. And when I need each color, I dip my brush into the gel food color and then I swish it around the alcohol and dab it off on the paper towel. I'm going to start off with Belle's face and her neck and I'm using an ivory color. You'll notice it's super faint right now, but it's not going to stay that way. This is just the first layer. All of Belle is going to have multiple layers of color, so we start off really soft. Now when I'm going from a light color to a darker color, I don't really bother washing off my brush. So this was from ivory to golden yellow, didn't wipe it off at all. But if I go from darker to lighter, I will wipe it off with water and then dab it on the paper towel to make sure it's clean before I grab my new color. A tip when you're painting her hair, don't just color it in back and forth. Go in the movement of her natural hair strokes. Even though this is the first layer, you will see it. And you wanna start off with your watercolor brush on the tip, then you go against the belly of the brush and flick it out on the tip again to get that natural hair stroke. While her hair was drying, I went ahead and did a very light coat of blue on her dress and her bow. And now using a fine tip brush or the tip of your fat brush, if it's pointed, you go ahead and grab a brown and you outline her face, her neck, some of her facial features. For her nose, I don't outline the nose. I just mark off where I want the nostrils to be because I don't want harsh lines on Belle. A tip for her eyes is don't close off the eyes on the center or on the outside. Leave that open, just outline the top lid and the bottom lid so that it doesn't look harsh. 
The nose you will go ahead and shadow later and you'll keep going back to the face. So even if she looks a little weird right now, don't worry about it. For her hair color, once the yellow is dry, I go back in with brown. And again, I'm going in the shape of her hair. I want it always to be the shape. Don't be tempted to color in. Another tip for her eyes would be don't have her looking straight ahead. It's very robotic to have it that way and it's just going to make her look very intimidating and stiff. You don't want that. When she's looking off to the side, to the bottom, anywhere else but the dead center, she's going to look nicer and friendlier. Now with the excess brown from having painted her hair, I go back and I start to do shadows around her neck and I start to contour her face around the cheeks. I shadow the nose so it's nice and soft, a little bit of shape on each side of her nose. I shadow the top of her forehead to contour it a bit. And a tip for when you're coloring lips, you want to leave a white oval on the bottom lip in the center to give it a little bit of a pouty look and then you just color on the edges of each lip and work towards the center so that the lightest color is in the center of each lip making them look a little fuller she looks a little bit harsh in the face right now a little blotchy but once that is dry you'll go back in with just a wet plain no color brush and you'll soften it in soften in all the colors so don't worry about that right now i went ahead and i added some red to her hair and then you'll notice that the excess from the red which was not very much i went ahead and i colored her cheeks a bit and her lips a bit as well any colors that i use on her face i want to make sure that they're very very light i want everything to blend in and be soft the red in her hair, you'll notice it's a little harsh right now, but it will be covered up with brown, so it's just going to look like an undertone later on. Now, with her dress, the blue, I'm going to start working on the shadows and the highlights, even though this isn't the last layer of blue. This sky blue will be an undertone for her dress, and I want to make sure to start coloring in the shadows right over her chest under her chest and by where her arms are because that's naturally where the shadows would be and I don't want a flat picture. I want it to look like it has some movement. Using a very, very faint blue, I start to outline the white parts of her outfit, which are her sleeves and a little bit of the collar so that it looks like an off-white and I start to color in some shadows by creating wrinkles on her arm. Don't be afraid to do wrinkles and movements on your picture. I would, I would consider that a tip. Go ahead and add that so that it looks like there's more movement and it looks more alive. This is where I'm blending in the color with just a plain brush on her face. And then I go ahead and start working on the hair again. The hair takes a lot of coloring and a lot of patience. But I also think it's the most satisfying to come together because it's so interesting to see all these colors together. I add a bit more golden yellow to the brown as well. So don't feel like just since you added it at the beginning, that's the last time you'll see it. If you want it to pop a little brighter, add it again. If you don't, if you want it to just be darker, then just go with the darker brown. You'll notice closest to her face, the hair is darker, and that's because that's where it's sort of being cupped under, so there's a natural shadow, and I want to create that natural shadow, so I keep it darkest there. Another tip for her eyes, when you're getting ready to actually outline her eyes, use a brown, not a harsh black. And again, do not connect the centers, do not connect the outside. Just do the top lid and the bottom lid and get close to it, but don't connect it. It'll be really harsh and it won't look natural. This is 
Another tip for the face, when you're coloring the eyebrows, don't just do one swoop for an eyebrow. Don't color them in. You want to use little flicks with your fine tip brush to make it look like there's little strokes of hair. It'll look so much better. A tip when you're coloring her nose, while you do only the shadows on the side of her nose and shadow on the top of her nose a little bit, leave the center front of her nose light so that there's that highlight there and it looks like it perks up a little bit, that there's a little bit of movement to that nose. With the eyes, I'm using a honey brown, but on the bottom left of the iris, I leave a spot of white, which you call a catch light, and that's to give it a little bit more shimmer, and it looks, it looks more like a real eye. And then I use a dark brown for the pupil. For the eyelashes, I go ahead and color them with the same dark brown and I just go and flick little lashes towards the end of her eyes and just a few on the bottom because I want it to look natural even though I do like really big eyelashes. And all the excess color I just go ahead and add to her hair to create more shadows amongst the strands and really separate that hair. Now that I'm done with her face, I'm going to add some wispy bangs on the front of her face. And I start off again with a golden yellow. I make them not just flat down, I give them a curve and a flick at the end. Have some extra little hairs off on the side so it looks a little more natural. While her hair is drying, I'll go ahead and work on the whites of her sleeves so that they stand out a little bit more against the fondant and don't blend in so much. I add just a few streaks of white in her hair, just as highlight, it blends in. So it's not like I'm giving her white hair, I'm not trying to age her. And then I go back into the blue of her dress and her bow with a dark corn flower blue and just accent all the shadows that I already had there to begin with. Once her hair is dry, I go in with a darker brown and make sure to have very soft tips at the edge of her bangs so that they're not bluntly cut. And go ahead and darken in the hair. The center hair that goes to the very back, I also want dark because it's further back. It has that darker shadow. I want it to stand out in contrast to the hair that she pulls to the side and back. Now I can leave the cake just as is, but I wanna tie in the yellow color that you associate Belle with. So I take in some dark yellow and some bright yellow, mix it in with the food grade alcohol, and I just blot all around, being careful around Belle herself, but everywhere else around the cake and the top, I just have at it to add different textures and different shades of yellow, and just make it a little bit more interesting. Now in order to attach the rose, I make little hooks out of floral wire and wrap them in floral tape. They're about an inch long on each side. I decide where I want my rose to be and I put three little marks where I want the hooks to be. I use three because it's a fairly long rose. I push those hooks in about halfway into my cake and then I go ahead and slide my rose right down the middle of those hooks push them into place, and then I begin to adjust my rose, arching it, 
opening the petals up more and adding my extra loose petals all around the cake. And that's it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully everything was clear. If you have any questions, please do drop them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you guys for the next tutorial. Oh, 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 oh,